Hey, it's Biddy Penny. Welcome to my channel. Today I am making a whole lot of ephemera. <laughs> so this ephemera is made with old index cards. These were my children's cards. They're Spanish cards from two years ago that they didn't need anymore. And lucky for me, they wrote everything in pencil and I inherited them. So I decided I'd make a whole box of ephemera just based off of index cards. Now I wanted some of my cards to fit horizontally in the box and I wanted others to fit vertically. So I did trim some of them down just so that they would fit across the box. Now you could turn this into a journal all by itself. You guys have maybe seen me make journals before where they're not bound, but they're in boxes. Um, that would totally work for this, but I ended up using this ephemera and this little Dollar Tree crate just as storage. I used the Boho Butterfly Collection from Ruby and Pearl XO. I printed some of the pages, or some of the pages, yes, two to a page like these. Um, so they'd fit in that little box and that one. Others I printed full scale. Um, I printed, this is a two to a page. This is full scale borderless. Oh, I just love this collection so much. Um, you don't have to have printables for this project at all. You could just use any cardstock or any paper that you have and love. Any scrapbook paper would work. Okay, I'm gonna back some of my pages with some of my tea dye paper. I'm gonna use my Scotch Create permanent uh, glue stick here and glue these down very well. So uh, that way, because I'm making some like ephemera holders and mini journals and all kinds of things today, um, I wanted some of the pages to be backed for sure. I really like that page there. I'm gonna end up making a trifold out of the three little pieces at the bottom, which you'll see in the video. These pieces here, um, I did print two to a page and I thought these would be really cute, well, for just about anything. <laughs> if you guys missed it, I made a whole entire journal in a live video on Mother's Day this year. Um, I'll try to remember to leave it linked down below for you. And I filled that journal with some of this handmade ephemera at the time. It was so great. It made the journal making process even quicker, already having my ephemera made. So that was really, really fun. And I still have some of it left so I can use it in random journals or I could start a whole nother boho butterfly journal. Um, if I wanted to. So I'm just playing around, seeing how I might use these items. I was thinking about folding them in half. And then I need to trim the borders off of all the other pieces. Some of these I did layer up and trimmed multiple pages at one time, just because it worked that well for me. And of course that's a bit more efficient, especially when mass producing. So that's all I'm doing here is just trimming off the borders. Obviously, if you're using scrapbook paper or um, some other kind of cardstock, you might have to trim yours down. You would trim yours down differently than what I'm doing here. You could trim it down to the design or use your whole entire paper by trimming it um, using measurements that match your little box. Okay, so once I have all my paper ready, Again, I did use some Line Co. I used some Scotch Create, but I really didn't use a ton of different tools here today. So I did back a lot of those, which is what I was showing you on the tea dyed paper. On this one, I had a little bit left over. So what I did is I folded it over, I glued it on the top and bottom edge and actually created this into, I made this into like a little ephemera pocket. Um, so I'm just scoring it down the middle, creasing everything very well. And now that one has a pocket. I'm actually gonna do the same thing with this one. So just folding that excess over. If you didn't have excess, you could just take a small piece of paper and do the same thing with yours. Um, this one is going to be more of a horizontal uh, landscape version. And I love it. It has a little pocket there in the bottom. So pretty. 
Okay, so I've gotten a few things done with those. Now I'm gonna start pulling out these index cards. And the first thing that I'm going to do is pull like three pieces. And then I have this uh, old gift card that I use to do like tag designs to cut tag pieces. You just have to make sure you flip it over. You pick an edge, you use it on one side and then you flip it over. You'll see me do this again. I am cutting three index cards at a time because these weren't terribly thick. They're probably from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> okay, but I wanted them to be identical. Now I'm bringing in my favorite brown paper. <laughs> I think I almost use this in every video. I bought it off Amazon. You get 60 feet for $4 and I love it. I find so many uses for this paper in my craft room. And what I'm doing now is kind of lining up my index cards because I want to make a trifold little booklet with them. And this brown paper is not like cardstock at all. It's thin. It's like a brown paper bag is the weight of this um, paper. And so it definitely has to be backed. And so these index cards just came in handy as um, a tin plate and a backing for this little trifold. And I ended up, I did make two of them. So the first thing I'm doing is gluing these down and you can tell I'm leaving like an eighth of an inch in between them. That'll be where I fold everything. So I'm gonna trim this up real quick, take off the excess, just trimming off all the pieces, but don't cut between them. So I'm only gonna cut on the outside edge, and then in here, I'm just gonna cut away that part for the tags, making sure not to go down, and then over on the ends, the two ends of this little soon-to-be trifolds. Now I'm gonna pick some patterned paper to go on top of this. It's hard to pick when you love it all. <laughs> but I picked this collage sheet. I think it's so fun that the paper is already a collaged for me. It takes a lot of work out. So I'm just looking here and trying to decide which section of the paper I want. And so once I find that, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and glue this down. You could trace around if that made you more comfortable, whatever you like, but I'm using my Scotch Create glue and my Line Co glue, my PVA glue, and I'm putting that all around and I'm definitely putting it in those creases. So that 1 8 inch area between the tags, I want to put liquid glue there to make sure that they adhere the brown paper to this front collaged paper so that those seams are nice and strong. I'll even use my bone folder to get between there and really make sure that those make contact. And then I will trim once again. And I just think this makes such a fun little journaling spot. Um, you actually would have a lot of area to journal on or add pictures and ephemera. Um, just a fun addition to add into the many pockets that we put in our junk journals. <laughs> and it's so easy and it doesn't require any special dies or equipment at all. You can just do it with your scissors um, and a pencil or like the gift card hack that, uh, that I use. So then I made one more of those. And now I have these scraps. These are um, just random paper scraps from my stash. And I decided that I would use the index cards to make some journaling cards. It's actually really basic, really easy. I'm just trimming the uh, journaling card down, checking my box along the way, making sure it would fit. I thought that these scrapbook pages really uh, went nicely with the boho butterfly journal and so um, or with the um, paper so I used it I used both sides since this one was double-sided and I had plenty of scraps I cut out two I used one for the black and white stripes and the other one for the butterflies so this would be a great way 
to use up index cards. If you have the lines on them, then you instantly have like a journaling card and you could decorate this with ephemera on the front, on the back, you could stamp on it. I mean, just so many possibilities. You could add um, a band to hold things in it. I just really love these. I think they're really beautiful. Here I'm showing you that I'm going to glue this one down over the butterflies. It's so hard to do, but I did it. <laughs> I hope you guys are doing great today and that this video brings you a lot of inspiration, a way to use maybe some supplies that are in your craft room waiting on you to turn them into something amazing. Um, this would be a great um, if your scraps were long enough, this would also be a good one where you could fold the edge over instead of trimming it off um, to add pockets, whether it would be along the bottom edge or side edge. You could just fold the scrapbook paper over the index card and create a pocket that way, the way that I did on the ephemera holders in the beginning. So now I instantly have some journaling spots. You could put die cuts on them, all kinds of things. I'm just showing you, I made a lot of different ones. And with the, these, um, some of them, I'm gonna take and make a pocket like this. So all I did was the ones, the journaling cards that I wanted to, I glued the three sides together where the index card was and I made a sturdy little pocket to tuck things into. So there are my journaling cards. I even left one tall at the top. I thought that would be fun to decorate with. Okay, so now we have the ephemera, like folders and journaling cards and pockets. I'm gonna make some more things here. I really liked, um, there's the trifolds and now that they're dry, you don't ever wanna fold when your glue is wet. You always wanna fold when it's dry. So that's why I'd set those aside. Now I can fold those up and I just love these. And then I'm also going to use, so the paper, one of the papers from this paper pad, I'm showing that you could cut, put, poke holes at the top and put like seam binding or ribbon. And, um, but this paper collection from Ruby and Pearl had these three together. So what I'm showing you here is like, maybe you just want to use your patterned paper to make a trifold, you can totally do that. Um, so this one, it is backed with my tea dyed paper. I just scored between the three and folded it and you get the same results um, if you don't want them to be shaped like a tag. Okay, so I have these others. This is the two that are like ephemera holders. And I had these others and I decided that these would just be beautiful like journals and um, I'm thinking about the orientation of things I'm always thinking about that with my paper and so I am going to grab some scraps of mine um, some tea dyed scraps of mine and I'm going to make a couple of mini journals and these are so easy they don't require any kind of difficulty with stitching or anything at all so I have these blue sheets of tea dyed paper and I just decided to fold them in instead of trimming them down. Um, you know, it's, I'm not going to put a ton in each one. I'm actually just going to put um, a couple of sheets in each one of these little mini journals. And again, I'm just folding over the edges to make my paper fit. So I had put in some blue. And I think I'm gonna put in, yes, some other tea dye colors as well. This one I did trim down. I didn't wanna to have too many foldy parts. So we'll just have a few pages in each one. Mini journals don't need a ton of pages. I had a bunch of these um, tea dyed papers left over, so I was glad to find a home for them. <laughs> and I'm grabbing my awl and my string and my clips. 
I am going to go ahead and clip these together and I'm just going to poke two holes. No big deal. I'm not doing a three hole pamphlet stitch. We're just talking about a few pieces of paper that need to be bound together. So I just felt like that would be overkill to do the full three holes. I just need a little simple string and knot to hold these together. So that's what I'm going to do with these. I poked two holes. Uh, when you're sewing your journals together, wherever you start is where you'll end. So if you start your string on the outside of your journal, then your bow will be on the outside. And if you start it on the inside of your journal, then your bow or tied knot will be on the inside of your journal. So yeah, I just had two holes. I'm just running those through. I'm going to even out my string and simply tie a knot and then a bow. And this will certainly tie together three or four sheets of paper without a problem. And I just love it. So mini journal done, actually two of them. I definitely want to go back and make some more journals with this boho butterfly collection because every time I see the ephemera um, and I already gave the other journal away to my sister-in-law I'm like oh I really want a journal made out of that collection <laughs> so I know I have enough ephemera left and all it will take is me printing a few pages I have a ton of tea dyed paper so the only thing stopping me is me <laughs> and time, a lack thereof. Okay, now I wanna fill these little ephemera holders cause that would be fun. And I have all these pre-cut pieces. Um, I think these are from Bohemian Crafting if I'm not mistaken, or they're from Seven Plaza, but I'm not sure. If you're looking, if you like everything that you see in this little pocket, I would check Bohemian Crafting first because I really feel like that's where I picked them up from. Um, but again, I'm just not 100% sure on that. I thought it'd be fun to kind of fold and create like a little ticket scroll. So um, that's what I'm gonna do with these. I am just bending and creasing and um, using my ink to distress them and I mean you certainly could cut these apart but I thought it was kind of fun to have a scroll of tickets to put in there and another journaling spot for some great hidden journaling and I just fill that with a few pieces of ephemera same thing here I'm just gonna grab a few more pieces that will fit here and I will add them in it's so fun filling, you know, filling up your journal, adding all these pieces, adding all the details. And now I decided I really wanted to use this scrap of paper and I decided to decorate the cover of this piece. And I added the label to the inside of the other. I think it'd be fun to label that um, pocket with like movie tickets or wh whatever um, and fill it up with whatever you label it scriptures um, quotes whatever whatever you come up with <laughs> I say movie tickets because we've been seeing a lot of movies around here lately <laughs> but you don't get tickets anymore do you I know all right, so I brought in my Tim Holtz people. I brought in some other things. Um, you know, you could use anything. You don't have to have printables. Again, you can buy ephemera from Tim Holtz that I think he makes it in very much like a junk journal style now. Um, and it's probably ideal for people who aren't printing to be able to grab. So I dug through all my little mini dolls and I found one that really reminded me of my niece because I was making this for my sister-in-law but I couldn't find one that reminded me of my nephew but I did find one that reminded me of their dog so I picked the girl and the dog eventually and decorated the front of this little ephemera pocket <laughs> I just love the way it came out so there we are 
we've got a girl and a dog doesn't get much better than that <laughs> and yeah I just have you know a couple of scraps layered up there I'm poking out the pieces um, you know, these mini Tim Holt dolls and all the Tim Holtz dolls, they, a lot of times they're die cuts and they have parts that are supposed to be popped out, but I can only imagine what it's like to produce millions of these little pieces of paper. They don't all get poked out. So I just check it before I glue anything down and make sure to poke out those pieces myself. So adorable. <laughs> I just love this little piece. It was so fun to personalize pieces just for my sister-in-law. I used my date stamp and put the children's birthdays um, throughout the journal in different places and since it was a Mother's Day journal. So I have my seam binding from my scrap cabin and I'm going to be using that today to give this a final adorable touch. So I'm just pulling a piece out. I'm gonna take it, I'm not binding anything together here. It's simply a decoration and I'm just folding it over. I'll tie it in a knot and that is done. Ready to go in a pocket of her journal. Um, so I have other things that might seem out of order but I've been working on my Anne of Green Gables journals and I have more ephemera uh, making videos for you. So I just need to get those turned out, edited and, and released for you. This is some more stuff I need to show you is how I've been making my Polaroids. And here's just a quick walkthrough of my pieces. So I have my faux Polaroid. I have this cute little ephemera thing that we just finished. Um, I've got lots and lots of these journaling cards. Um, that was also a journaling card, but it was one that folded. And then I've got my trifold journaling spots and mini journals. And I'm just kind of putting them in here in different order, varying things in case. I just wanted to show you that this could in itself be its own little journal. A journal doesn't have to be in a book. It can be in a box. It doesn't have to be a $1.25 wooden crate either from the Dollar Tree. It can be any box you have. Um, and it's quite fun because then you can put trinkets in there and you can do things other than paper when you're using a box for your journal. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you lots of ideas for ephemera and give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. I will be back another time to share more with you. And um, yeah, have a wonderful day. See you next time. Bye.